The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. Good afternoon, everybody. It's not David White. Dave's out this afternoon. He will be back tomorrow. Uh, Tommy O'Brien filling in for Dave, and we get a treat. I'm filling in for about half the hour, folks. I'll be going till 2.30. My dad's going to be taking over Tom O'Brien from 2.30 till 3 to finish out Dave's program. Then he'll be doing his program, the Tom O'Brien Hour, live from 3 till 4, making sure we get some live programming all day for a very important day in the markets. As we're talking about an acceleration, let's kick it off with the NASDAQ 100. We just touched session lows. In the last 15 minutes, folks, 12,225, you're negative more than 3.5% in the NASDAQ 100. S&P's negative 111 right now. Twice we've traded under 4,000 today. We're just seven points above that level. S&P's negative by 2.7%. Dow off 1.4% right now. The Russell off 3.8% right now. Remarkable, the Russell giving up almost 10% on the index from where we were trading at last Wednesday. NASDAQ 100, we're approaching similar territory. You're negative 1,300 points below where you were on Wednesday. 10%, folks, just like that. Remarkable, uh, remarkable to say the least. Everything's getting hit. How about Bitcoin? We can trade under 31,000. You're off $4,600 per Bitcoin right now, 31,300. Ethereum's trading under 2,300, 2,299. Gold contract, negative $26 at 1856 right now. Excuse me as I jump around. Uh, you have the 10 year getting down to. Up 12 ticks, you're up almost a full point from where you were trading at. We got the 10-year yield sitting at about 3.8, excuse me, not 3.8, not quite there yet, 3.08%. We were sitting at about 3.2% early this morning. Uh, so a little bit of a reversion there in yields, but the market has not let up at all. And we jump over to the volatility index right now. You kick it off with the VIX above 34, 34.06. As I did in the update to kick off 2 o'clock, you jump back to a weekly basis. And you're talking about the sixth consecutive week of lower prices. And if you want to talk about some dicey territory, the last six weeks have been pretty tough, right? Well, guess what, folks? We got a bar that's just as large as most of the weeks, and we are not even done with the first day of trading in the week just yet. We're down 113 points. We were sitting at about 4,600 as we kicked off the month of April. Uh, the April... Negative prices continuing into May, to say the least. And we still got two hours of trading, folks. And we got markets right near session lows. Dicey territory in the S&P 500. Uh, the 382, my dad started talking about it early on. And, you know, the NASDAQ was at the 382 in no time, right? We made the 382 in the NASDAQ by March 14th, okay? We made that before you got the pop into late March back up to 15,000. Remarkable, 15,000. You have the NASDAQ down almost 20%, folks from where we were coming into April, let alone from the highs, okay? You're down 4,500 points right now. You're approaching 27% off of the highs in the NASDAQ 100. Seems like 50% is a number that it might hit 12,000 well within play right now at 237 points from that price level. <coughs> Excuse me, and the S&P just teetering on that 4,000 mark. And if you get below 4,000, 3,800 is well within play and probably the next stop in the S&Ps. All right, I talked about this on my program this morning. One of the articles I wanted to talk about, an article over at Bloomberg, this article out over the weekend, talking about plenty of catalysts to help push treasury, treasury rates above 2018 highs. Inflation data. We get CPI data out on Wednesday. I'm going to talk about that in one moment. Now, you jump down to what we're talking about in terms of Fed commentary. Okay, you have auctions coming up. You already have Fed commentary, Fed commentary going on today. Uh, but one of the things that struck me most from this article was talking about the CPI. 
and talking about what we're expecting and what the market's expecting. So here's what they have to say. The April CPI report, which is out Wednesday of this week, so less than 48 hours from right now. This might be part of the reason why the market's being a little bit worried of what could come down the line is expected to show an overall decline in the annual pace of inflation to 8.1% from 8.5% in March from core. So if you exclude food and energy, you're gonna see a drop to 6% year over year from 6.5%. That's the forecast. So the forecast right now in the market is that you are gonna have inflation peaking in March and from here it'll go down. That's very possible, folks, but it's very possible that it doesn't go the other way. And if you have the markets trading at a price point of, I mean, 4,500, 4,600 a month ago, you have the markets trading at a price point of 4,200 at the end of April almost. You have the markets trading at a price point of 41 and change to end last week. What happens if that price point is predicated on inflation peaking in March and now beginning to subside as we come into some tough comps towards the end of the year. And it is accurate. We're going to deal with some tough comps, as in year over year, as we get into the latter part of 2022, it is going to become much more difficult to post something like an inflationary factor of 8.5% year over year when you're dealing with a previous year over year number that had already escalated dramatically. But guess what? It's well within possible, folks, because remember the reasons that people were saying that inflation was persisting. Inflation was persisting a lot of the time, the term was transitory, right? It almost became a running joke. The point being is that you could still make the same case for almost all the factors driving inflation. Now, a lot of that was talking about stimulus, right? Well, the stimulus isn't there, folks, right? That excessive unemployment, that's not there anymore. Inflation's still pretty abundant. What if supply chain is a huge factor in all this inflation with pent up demand combined? OK, you add in the human labor costs. OK, we have job openings still at a record territory. Human capital is going to cause increases in wages continuing. There are enough factors in play that you should at least be considering that inflation will run hotter than the expectation. And if it does, the market will go even further into negative territory, because if we ever start getting year over year comps later this year that are exceeding expectations, you're going to be talking about over a two-year basis, like 14, 15, 16 percent. If you get 8 percent one year, you get 6 percent the next year. That means if prices are up 14 percent in 24 months. OK, that's not quite the expectation, but you see where things could go. Now, we get that number on Wednesday morning. OK, and the market's still looking for 8.1, but it's looking for a slowdown. And I imagine that they're going to be a looking for a slowdown on a continuing basis. And there is a distinct possibility that it at least takes longer than they're thinking for inflation to abate because China is still a mess. Supply chains are still a mess. Human capital is still going to be costing a lot more money. OK, now wages are not rising with inflation. OK, so what if wages are going to catch up a little bit? Well, if wages are going to catch up and people are going to be getting raises, then what's going to happen? That's going to translate into inflationary tendencies. The one thing that's not going to be helping inflation, as in that may actually be helping to abate inflation, unfortunately, is that with these rising rates, you could see a housing pullback. Because, man, we're talking about some rising rates. With You're talking about a 30-year. What are we pushing? Five, five and a quarter percent pretty soon? Stay tuned, folks. I'll be back for one more segment. And then we got my dad jumping in at 2.30. We'll be right back to talk about a couple other equities moving today. Are you grinding in the market but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? 
Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now, negative by 104 points. You're about 15 points off of that 4,000 mark. It'll be interesting to see as we come into the final hour and a half of the trading day if that 4,000 is the line in the sand. It looks like it is right now. You zoom in on the action. Talk about touching it barely to 39.97 early this morning. And check out the moves, folks. 40 points up. You got a full percentage up, a full percentage back down. We touched 39.98. Uh, within just prior to the 2 p.m. hour, and right now you're about 20 points off of there. You're trading at 4,019. And Louie, you make a great point, man. Uh, I could use cheaper real estate prices to get another nest. And I agree, there's a lot of people saying, okay, you know, maybe I didn't secure that second property, right? The tough part is, man, if inflation's raging, causing higher rates, causing the housing prices to go down, that's going to matter in the payment which is a big part of that, which is the reason why those prices will go down. So it's going to be a round and round um, as that goes. But everything has cycles, folks, as we uh, get to see play out in pretty dramatic fashion right now across the board. Housing's held up pretty well. If you're living in a house, uh, I don't think there's that much risk because rental prices are so high. But if you're investing in a house, there could be some pullbacks right here, you know, and uh, real estate. It's not exactly a three-month downturn, three-month upturn, right? Not quite at all. As in, of course, it's going to be a multi-year, if not a five-year down, five-year to get back. Um, they can have some longer cycles in real estate as that market tends to take a little bit longer to sort itself up sometimes. Yeah, still no inventory. I, I agree. It's a compounding factor. And the number of variables in play in this market, and that's one of the reasons why I say you're seeing CPI, the market is pricing in that we've peaked inflation. You know, you got no inventory in a housing market. You have no inventory in a jobs market, right? We have supply chains that are through the roof. You have that picture of the ports in China that looks like uh, the ships sitting off port are a bunch of ants. At least realize, folks, that there is a risk. There is a very real risk that inflation takes a lot longer, even with the 50%, 50 basis point hike the next meeting or two, that it could be a little bit longer. Um, yeah, I mean, there was even a part, I think it was in the same article I was looking at before I jump around. I think there was something in here talking about what economists were looking for. Uh, I had a couple articles out. I think it was about one in four people 
in a Bloomberg survey thought that the 10 year would not see 3.15 percent this year. And that was only last week. And it just hit 3.2 percent to show you how wrong people may be of what we might be in store for. Um, and in the long run, we're going to be fine. But man, we got some volatility coming down the line, folks, with inflation, even expected to be on the CPI at 8.1 percent as we start to come down. All right. A lesson for us all. Rivian. So Ford is selling shares at a discount. And they got a lot more shares to sell, too. Selling 8 million of its shares. I think they got, yeah, 102 million shares is what they have. Um, they own 12% of the electric vehicle hopeful. Uh, you jump over to Rivian, man. Talk about a lesson. Folks, if somebody comes to you and says, I got a company worth 80 to $100 billion and I haven't taken in a dollar yet, be very wary of buying that person's shares. You trade up to 179 on their listing. You jump up to 180 you're back to 23 bucks. And uh, if Ford is selling shares at a discount, folks, they're not making stupid decisions, as in there's a reason behind that. And Ford's going to be playing the electric vehicle market as well. They just may want to be all in on themselves and not have any exposure to their competitor. But that doesn't mean you have to sell them at a discount. They're selling them for a discount, saying, get me out, get me out right now. I don't even care if I'm taking a little bit below market. And the market's paying attention. You're down 18.5% for Rivian. Uh, in a bad market with growth stocks are getting punished, you of course you're going to get punished when a company like this um, has yet to really prove themselves on a revenue basis. All right, what else we got up here? Yeah, jump into this. Um, so this is Goldman out here, an analyst at Goldman, at least. Goldman strategist, I should say, sees stocks downside even if a recession is avoided. Uh, one part of this article that struck out, the only silver lining for investors is that most of the bad news is likely in the price following the recent retreat, suggesting, quote, unquote, according to this note from strategists, equities will, will require an extremely large negative shock to drive share prices substantially lower in the near future. Well, in, in light of what I've been saying, folks, keeping within the same theme, okay, it should not be a super extreme shock if somehow analysts are wrong about inflation when you consider what's happened over the last 12 months. That's what I'm trying to bring forward. You can just, you know, you don't have to predict the market if sometimes you can just be at least aware of the possibilities and the somewhat probable nature of those possibilities. And the market right now seems to be pricing in that it might have a much greater chance of struggling to get over the inflationary factors that we're dealing with. I mean, for so long, the Fed was talking about transitory because of kind of the pandemic uh, troubles that we're dealing with, as in the troubles with the supply chain issues for lockdowns in China, lockdowns abroad, ships not being able to go where they need to go, uh, human capital, the trucking issue, having trouble getting goods where they need to go. And that was supposed to sort itself out. As far as I can tell, that has not sorted itself out, especially when you add in that Apple came out, and this is really where things started to get out of line, right? Is that Apple came out and said that the, all of their supply chain issues are in the quarter that's coming. Four to eight billion dollars. Amazon came out and said, we lost money. We might lose money next quarter. Now, Amazon, whew, you talk about a pullback, man. Um, you jump over to Amazon, you take this thing, you put it on a three-year weekly, and you are back to, which is remarkable, pre-COVID levels. 2185 was the high, folks. We make it today to 2179. You chop around above 3000 for a while. It's quite a pullback. Uh, longer term, if you're looking for Amazon, I would start looking at it. You know, um, I think this market can get down to 3800 So maybe that's where you're looking for where Amazon sits at that point. Because, boy, you're down 4.6% today, man. This market trades lower. Amazon's trading lower. Okay. But the reason why they got punished so much and that they are getting punished so much is that they're not making money right now. And stocks who are not making money right now are getting punished. Rivian's the poster boy of them all. Uh, but even Amazon is a growth stock, okay, down 4.6% today. One of the reasons that they got punished, though, giving you a little bit of a bull twist as somebody that has some Amazon retirement account, is that they built out their infrastructure too quickly. They hired almost 760,000 workers, I think, in the last two years, doubling their workforce. 
So their workforce is now 1.6 million. They came into COVID at 800,000. Think of what Amazon was as we came into COVID. They were the marquee company that could do everything, and they were doing it with 800,000 workers. Things ramped up so dramatically, okay? And in Amazon's defense, man, we turned on the switch, we ordered everything online, and it pretty much showed up, the whole pandemic and beyond. Okay, now yeah, they've ran out of items and occasionally. They bought a bunch of airplanes, they built out a bunch of warehouses, but they did it too quickly. They've had half empty trucks, they're asking people to take off time. They think that we'll pick up the slack, and in the long run, we will. And they've built out the infrastructure that they will eventually use. All right, folks, I see my dad's chart in there. He's loading up, he's getting ready with the Bloomberg. Uh, he's gonna be coming in at 2.30 to take over, and you got 90 minutes of Tom O'Brien, my dad, coming up live. Stay tuned, folks. We got the S&P sitting at 4,004. You're off 2.8%. NASDAQ off 3.6%. I'm O'Brien. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the Dow Industrials. We have the Dow Industrials right now trading down 507. You got the Nasdaq off 477. S&P's off 115. Gold's down 26 bucks at 1856. We get the silver contract off 60 cents at 2176. Notes and bonds. The 10 down tw up 12. 10 year up 12. 11806. 30 up 22 at 137. And good old King Dollar. Where are you, King Dollar? What are you doing out here? Yep, it's hanging at highs, man. Up 105 ticks, 103,765. Euro is at 105. The yen's at 130.40. And the British pound is at 124. Where are you, pound? 123 to 1 US dollar. So let's get over and take a look at this market, folks. Uh, bottom line, you know, this ABC is in effect. And I suspect 
it's going to get hit. So you have the SPY. The SPY's down 11 bucks. You got, you know, you're at 400. You get an ABC structure down at 394. So we make to 399. Bottom line, 394 is it. Now you got to remember something that um, if you have the out of time in the trade, you know you got a, a one to one ABC, a one to point three eight two, a one to five zero, oh, one to one point six one eight. Bottom line, you know we'll deal with it as we come. But the numbers I'm giving you is on one to one ABC structure. We look at the NDX 100, same type of setup. NDX, the three Qs have a 281 price projection. You're at 298 right now. We hit 297 out here today, and when we bring this up, we'll just put these on monthlies for a second. And you're going to see, it's pretty clear. I mean, it, it's, you know, we have come into, like, some support in the NASDAQ. Now, this is going to be, this is a big heads up, because watch how this goes. The top of the support in the NASDAQ is this 296, 297, where you are. The bottom of that is 260. Well, we got a 280 price projection. And that's always a problem when something like this happens, because... It's the beginning of the week, and if this digs into it at all, okay, we haven't really dug into it yet. We're into three points, but the size of these bars that we're talking about are almost 40 point bars. And these are these are monthly bars I'm talking about. So you got to dig into it a little bit more. Meaning, um, you get down to 290, we're 290, guess what? You're going to see 281, but more than likely, you're going to see 260. That's kind of how this lays out. That's in your NDX. We go and we take a look at the SPY. What do you have inside the SPY out here? We take a look at this. We put this on the monthly also. And what you're going to see there, so that, that is a 294. And 294, okay, is the top. There's not much, see, there's not much that the SPY can hang on to. And it's because we went up so fast, folks. That's the other side of this. So I suspect the SPY is going to blow right through this. The SPY looks to me, next stop down is actually two, 364. That's how that's laying out. And, of course, we take a look at, uh, well, let's go to the gold contract first. And then we'll take a look at some individual equities. Gold's down 27 bucks. You're trading 1853. You got 181,000 contracts traded. You haven't broken the swing yet. You're coming into 210, I believe. Let me just see this. 194 coming into 167. This is coming. This is coming in hard enough, man, that that can get broken. That's how this is shaking out, man. Yeah, it really it is. So, you know, we know we well. This we had had an ABC structure down in the gold market 18 uh, 1788. Now that got negated because it didn't even turn to a complex one because of the way that we traded last Thursday. You went up and you came up with some big volume. So that's negated. That being said, guess what? You can always just get up another one, you know? So we'll see how this shakes out down there. And it's all, this, this one here has to do with the US dollar. This dollar is refusing to back off the highs. You know, that's how this is. Look, at, we've been up here, what, the three, six. This is the eighth day we've been up here, you know? We, we pulled back uh, last Wednesday, and it came right back Thursday. And above this, you know, it's clear. We get a couple points away from this, and it's clear still only to 121. That's how this thing is shaking out. Pretty wild. Some of the higher volume equities that we have. Well, actually, let's look at the 10-year. We're, we're dealing at 3.17 this morning. What, 3.13. Right now, yeah, it's live at 3.07. 3.13, we hit this morning. Big numbers. Some of the higher volume equities out here, and this, let me just see something. So, and I'm a, oh yeah, we're going to have high volume today, man. This is high volume, folks. We're, we're already at 692 million, and it's 230. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a big number, man. We go take a look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ yeah, is at 4 billion already. We're, we're going to have volume behind these moves. Some of the higher volume equities inside of this market right now, Let's pull this, get that S&P up there. Okay, so you get Apple down 488. You get Advanced Micro off 952. Microsoft $9. NVIDIA $16. Exxon $7. Tesla 67. Facebook 5. You get some monster numbers out here. Oxy, Oxy uh, Petroleum down to 7. 
dollars. Now, let me show you inside the OIH because what, we're, what, we're, what you're going to see here, we're going to go from, they finished their way on the way up, but it's going to be very close. We might have ABC structures on the way down now in the OIH. And that's all this market needs, <laughs> let me tell you, because that was the only place that was strong. We're going after B point today, 252.95. You need 1.45 million. I think we're going to get it. And if that's what you get, it's a, it's a big ABC down. You get 312 is the top. 252 is the bottom, so what did we got? That's uh, 48, 58, 60 bucks. Um, that gets you 226. And 226, yeah, is the next leg down. 226 brings you back to January 25th. And, well, we'll see. Hour and a half, I think it looks like it's going to be enough. Let's go to Oxy and take a look at Oxy, too. So Oxy right now, that's just coming off the highs with volume. But you can see, this already tested the highs with lighter volume. So now the question is going to be like, where does it want to go in the downside? Chevron CVX, we take a look at Chevron here. Chevron's down $11.35. And this already, you could, this is, this is, let's see, did it, this might have not tested it. Let's see. Now, 174, it had 34 million versus 57. Oh, look at this, man. See, when they test like this, okay, 174, 54. 174, 76, 174 flat out, yeah. Okay, so your first high out here was 174, 57 million. Tested it right away, 174, 76, 34 million. Came down, came all the way back and almost hit it. 174, 54, but see how the volume, 7.6 million versus 34 million versus 57. And then you come off that with 15, and you get volume today. It's going, yeah. This is, uh, this market is something else, man. That, just give me one second here. I'm getting straightened out here. We go take a look at the uh, GDX, because, I mean, they're smoking everything. There's no two ways about this. The GDX out here, that's down... Buck seventy six. Twenty nine million. It's gonna be close, man. This could be an ABC down too. Man, if this is an ABC down, this is gonna be a trip. So what's gonna happen here is this. We need eight million. It can get, this can get eight million. This can get eight million an hour and a half, man. We'll see how that shakes out. If that's the case, it's gonna be a big one. Forty one. Seven, that lines up 28, and 28's the lows. There's lows out there, 28.87. So Are you in the market for break. buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
WTFN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Hey, you gotta love it when you have a You know, it's so funny, folks. I was just waiting for my music. <laughs> Dow, Dow Industrial is down 527. NASDAQ is off 486. S&P's off 117. Let's go to our man, John in Philly. John, what's going on, brother? Hey, John. Thanks for taking the call. 2.30. Aren't we, uh, aren't we lucky here today? We're cranking. That's a beautiful thing. Hey, Tom, uh, long, long ago, you were the one who educated me on the power of three things, price, volume, and swing points. So now uh, I ask you here in real time right now, the, uh, the, the NASDAQ 100 NDX, yep. that's futures, have just come down and exactly tested a major swing low. That was March 5th, 2021. Is, is this important? Uh, is it likely to bounce? If it doesn't, what does that foretell, in your opinion, please? Yeah, I just see. The, so what you do have intraday here, right, is that the I, I was looking like if you had another ABC structure down. I'm going with the ABC down, John, and we're a long way away from it. Um, yeah. So, you know, and the futures. Yeah, this, this I, I see the number you're talking about, but, you know. My, my take is that this thing's not going to stop. This, this looks to me like, and how, and 90, is it 90, this looks like the Asian contagion to me. This is like, it has the same feel of it. It has the same, that it was just relentless day after day after day after day. That's what it looks like, man. You know, but we're coming to the tops of those numbers. And, you know, the bottom line is that, you know, you can see, let's see. 249, we're at 244. I think it's going to blow right through them and go to the bottom of them. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Tom, Tom I, I always appreciate a very direct answer. So that's all, I, uh, that's all I asked for. So thank you very much. Okay, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. It's sad but true, folks. These, these, it's, it's a, this, is a, this is a heavy market, man. And there are plenty of people that have never seen a market like this. And that's going to be really... Um, well, it already is pretty intense, but you can, I, I can tell, this is my opinion, but to me, people are still not paranoid. And that's when people lose the most amount of money, okay? Um, if you're not nervous and you have portfolios, they, it just keeps going. You know, that saying that I have, the market's job is to take the most amount of money away from the most amount of people in the least amount of time and the market is the most efficient mechanism I've seen to do that in my life, period. You know what I mean? Meaning the quickness. The quickness is always like crazy, folks. Um, and in this particular case here, you know, I think that people are just not paying attention. That's, that's, and I can, I can see why. I mean, it, 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 it. now, what I also want to set up is this. Do you, do you remember, and I'm sure if, if you're a new listener, I'm, we appreciate you growling and prowling with us. We'll never lose you, and welcome to the Tiger family. A lot of the folks that have been out here, 
Remember when I was talking about, okay, the, what's coming down here is this, and I'm gonna bring you all the way back to the original baby boomers, meaning me, uh, folks that are about five or six years older than me. I'm, I'm about six years into it. And remember I, I would, what I would always say is that if you're a baby boomer, all you had to do is be ahead of the rest of the baby boomers and you're gonna make money. Because there's so many of them, okay? And then what I was doing is this. I start going through my own cycles, right? Thinking that, okay, man, I remember, you know, when the Dow was at 803 in 1980, okay? I remember that it stopped moving then, and then the, the bottom line is that more people and more people, meaning the baby boomers, really start getting into it in, in a month's way. But that was really the beginning of the move up, up, up. And simultaneously, it was the move in, into the market and into real estate. And then the first real estate pullback had to do with all the baby boomers, okay, already, so they, they were buying, buying, buying like crazy, going all the way from, you know, let's say the 70s, 76, around there, earlier than that, going all the way up. And then we had the crash in 1987. Now, the crash in 1987, it just went front, down quick and back. But what that set up, what happened there, what that set up is that that set up the first real estate pullback in 89. And that was a monster one. It was a monster one in Boston, New York, Orange County, Dallas, Texas, Anchorage, Alaska. Um, you know, those are top markets. Those markets got cut in half, okay? So then what ended up happening is that the acceleration starts going forward again. You went up to 98, and real, real estate came back strong as anything, okay? It came back big time. Went up to 98, and... That was the agent contagion. The agent contagion basically took things south because what ended up happening, of course, is that there were plenty of larger funds on the wrong side. Real estate went bonkers from 98, no doubt, going all the way to 2005 and imploded, right? So where my head was going, and my head's still at, is this, is that my son Tommy is actually one year older than the next generation, or two generation, I'll be the next generation down, that is larger than the baby boomers. So, this is my take here, how this thing is going. You have two different things going on. Number one, most of them haven't seen a downdraft. Tommy did because he was in the office at the 2007, 2008 one, okay? Most of them have never seen one. Simultaneously, all those people came into the market for housing. Now watch what happened with housing. All those people come into the market for housing. Us, the baby boomers, never get out of the market. We really understood what we were doing now, so we could even make better choices, right? And then on top of that, all the funds came in and bought. So what you have there is that that's the expansion on steroids, and that's where we sit at this particular point. Now the market, this is gonna be the first large pullback for that generation. The real question is gonna be, you know, is this gonna be a pullback right across the board? My take is that it is, okay? Um, this is, is a wild card in there for sure, but people always keep saying that, yeah, everyone's got cash, and they do. Um, but guess what? <laughs> the cash runs out at some point, folks. That, that's my point more than anything. I'm just kind of laying you out there like that is the cycle. And so what's cool about this is that if you understand that cycle, if I'm correct on that cycle, meaning the amount of demand versus supply, because it's all about volume, no matter what you're buying, then you want to get ready for basically, you know, buying when you think, you know, the world's going to end, which the world does, never ends, folks, okay? The world keeps expanding, okay? Forget the ending, okay? My take... We'll see where this shakes out. Dow Industrials right now down 542. Nasdaq's off 477. S&P's off 119. You get uh, you know, a lot of red in the screen out here. We go, uh, let's go look at Microsoft. Microsoft, you talk about volatility, man. You think Microsoft, you know, yeah, look at this thing. It's blowing its brains out, man. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With market volatility roaring back in April, Larry Pesavento has just announced a five-hour live trading webinar coming up on May 17th. Larry Pesavento is a 56-year trading veteran and has mastered his trading skills through many different market fluctuations. Join Larry on May 17th as he hosts a live five-hour trading webinar from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, giving you insight into how he analyzes the market and decides his plays. Larry will delve deep into the ABCD trading pattern, explaining how to structure your trading day, the times most likely to generate signals, which signals to ignore, and how to use the pattern to mitigate risk. In this all-day five-hour live trading webinar, take a seat by Larry's side as he trades the market markets real time, including the Dow and S&P 500 E-mini, crude oil, natural gas, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, and more. If you've ever wanted to get inside the mind of a market master, you cannot miss this live trading webinar. To sign up today, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks, to Dow. Dow is up 4 485, Nasdaq's up uh, 454, S&Ps are up 108. Let's go take a look at uh, micro strategy. So micro strategy, folks, their whole micro strategy is not about basically making um, anything. <laughs> their, uh, their strategy is about Bitcoin. So a couple of targets want to take a look at this because there's no doubt when you're talking about volatility, you're talking about like something insane. You know, micro strategy, they've gone from a price point of $880 six months ago to 221 because everything that hinges on what is the price of Bitcoin, okay? So, on a, let's see, the ninth, this is ever an ABC down, it'll be a wild. Let me put this on a weekly for a second. Okay, so on a weekly... Yeah, you got an ABC down. That's, uh, oh my God, 891, <laughs> 307, you kidding me? <laughs> 500, that's out of business. So, <laughs> let's see what the question is again. again. Yeah. Um, the correlation of the margin call around Bitcoin 20, yeah, um, I can go to XBT. Don't touch MicroStrategy, because that is a disaster. I mean, so that's probably saying that Bitcoin's going to be a disaster also. Let's bring up XBT for a second. 
You get 30,800. 30, oh, yeah, this is breaking apart. Okay. You know what, folks? What, what does happen is that when you get things like this, this is the whole deal that's saying that, you know, when the tide gets out, you find out who has a bathing suit on. And guess what? You know, the next stop for Bitcoin is 28. You break 28, the next stop is 19. Pretty intense, man. The whole thing is intense. You stay right there, folks. We are going to be coming right back to we'll finish this uh, market up. Dow Industrials right now uh, down 427. Nasdaq's off 431. S&P's off 101. We'll come right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.